Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 16 of my Java video tutorial series. Today, we're going to talk about the object class and the class class and go through every method that any object or class that you ever create automatically receives by default. And here I just went and defined the beginning of my class, and here is my main function. You've seen that a million times, so there's no reason to go over it. And what you have to understand is every object you ever create inherits all the methods of a class known as the object class. And here we're going to create an object. This is like the superest of super classes. And if you haven't seen the other videos, you should definitely check them out. There's a link underneath of this video that's going to help you better understand this code. Now here what I'm doing is I'm creating an object called supercar and I'm assigning that it is of type a vehicle. However, the code in general, the Java interpreter is going to see supercar as of type object inside of this. Now supercar is going to inherit all the object methods, but an object of class object can't access the vehicle methods. Now we previously had gone over this, but I think it's important to do it again. So for example, if I would go supercar and I would say get speed, this is not going to be allowed even though the get speed method is defined inside a vehicle. See, right here, get speed, but this is not looked upon as if it is a vehicle, it is looked upon as if it is a object. Now, if we wanted to be able to get at this information, could we do it? Yes, we could. We need to cast it. And I know I've talked about this previously, but it's very important that you understand it. So if I wanted to say that I want this to be looked upon as a vehicle, this is exactly what I would do. And then I'd put that inside of there and then everything would be peachy. And whenever I execute this, it's going to print out the get speed return value, which is 0, 0.0. There it is. So that's how you would be able to use it as an object. However, cast it to being a vehicle if you ever needed to do that. So let's go in here and actually create a vehicle and let's call it super truck is equal to new vehicle and make sure that I have this uppercase otherwise it's going to get confused. Now I can use a built-in object method called the equals method. Just print that out there and then we can do something like put in supercar and see if it equals super truck. This would be ways that you could come in here and compare to see whether one object is equal to another object. And as you can see, it returns false because they are two separate objects. So there's an equals method, and there's a whole bunch of these different things. What you have to understand is each time you create a new object, it creates a unique identifier for that object, and that unique identifier is called a hash code. So if I wanted to find out what Supercar's hash code was, easily enough, I just type that there, and it's going to print out a unique number. And there it is. And you you might think this is some arbitrary crazy thing, but once you start doing more advanced Java programs, you indeed are going to use things like hash codes very often. There's another function, it's called finalize inside of Java, and what it does is it's actually a method that the Java garbage collector calls whenever you no longer need an object in memory and it goes in and cleans it up and gets rid of that extra space in memory. You could technically call it yourself, but there's really no point in it because there's no guarantee that it's actually going to execute. So just leave the Java garbage collection full. Or Java. Another thing you could do is call the get class method. So if I call supercar get class and like this, what it's going to do is it's going to print out the class for said object. Make sure I put supercar instead of super. And you can see indeed it does know it's a vehicle even though I defined it as an object up here. See? Smart enough to figure that out. Well then you have the class object and a whole bunch of methods that are available inside of it. One of those being a method called get name, which returns one thing, which is the name of the class. So instead of printing out class there and before vehicle, it's just going to get right to the point. However, you're going to have to go super car and then you're going to have to go get class and then after that call get name. If you call get name directly Directly, it does not go and execute that code. And you can see it prints out vehicle just like that. You could also come in and check if two objects are of the same class, and this is a uh, slightly more complicated. So you go supercar, get class, like that, and then use the equal sign, and then type in super truck, get class, right like that. And then in the situation which they would be the same, this would print out, which indeed it would, because they are both of the same class type. And you can see that the same prints out there. And these are all kind of like things you just have to learn because as time goes by, it's going to be very important that you understand what methods you have available to you so you can save yourself a lot of time. You could also call the get super class method. Now again, you're going to have to come in here and do this sort of thing right here. Call get class first, like that. And then it's going to be super class. And there's no reason to put a capital C inside of this guy. Right like that. 
And in that situation, it's going to print out crashable because that was indeed the superclass four type vehicle. Now, there's another method called the two string method. Now, if you just call two string on a regular object, it's going to print out information that's not particularly useful. So that's why two string is very often overwritten anytime that you might want to use it. And if you want to overwrite it, you're going to have to go into the actual class type for vehicle in this situation. And we're going to come in here and just go public string because it returns a string and call two string. We're going to overwrite write this guy. So let's say, for example, you'd want it to return a num of wheels, just as a for instance, this num of wheels. And that's exactly what it does. Now, if somebody would come in here and call super car dot to string, it's going to call that new overwritten method that you put in there. See, number of wheels. If you wouldn't have done that, it would have printed out a bunch of garbage. And as I've shown you in the past, very common thing that you're going to see is that primitives are converted into strings with the two string method. And you do that by figuring out what type of primitive you're going to print out. In this situation, it's going to be an integer. And then you call the two string method and you pass the primitive to it, right like that. And in that situation, it's gonna print out 100. So let's get into a little bit more crazy stuff like the clone method. Now what clone allows you to do is copy the current values and everything of an object at a certain point in time and assign it to another. However, you have to understand that if you make changes to one of the clones after you create this brand new clone, they are not going to affect each other after that original clone. So for instance, if you made a clone of a certain person and then you punch the original version in the nose, that's not in any way going to affect the other clone. It's exactly what it is. It's a clone. Now, if you want to be able to clone vehicles in this situation, there's a couple things you need to do. So first off, you need to go into vehicle and then after implements, you're going to put a comma in this situation and you're going to have to define that it should be a clonable method or a clonable class. So you did that. Then what you're going to have to do, and this is going to be every time you want to make something clonable, you're going to have to define a method called clone and public object clone because it's going to return an object and it's not just that simple because you're going to have to it's a weird thing with java you're going to have to catch an exception called the clone not supported exception and this exception has to be checked even though it's technically never going to be thrown because it's one of those exceptions that is checked by the compiler so that's just some goofiness you need to do so if we're going to make an object of type vehicle and then we got to call try and then you're going to go car is equal to and you know vehicle we're going to cast this to type vehicle and then we're going to call super clone and then like i said you technically have to do this you could catch all exceptions here but this is the exception that it wants you to collect specifically so there's a little bit of a return to handling errors and just to be safe we'll just go return null and then in a situation where that exception's not a problem we're going to go return car and that's what you're going to have to do every single time you want to be able to use one of these guys and we'll save that and now we can make clones of objects so the first thing we're going to do is i'm going to go into super truck and i'm going to set wheels to six and then i'm going to go vehicle super truck two is equal to and i'm going to make a clone of the original and you're going to have to put vehicle in front of here to cast it because it's going to return an object of type object and I'm going to call the clone method and just save that for a second. Jump back over here just so you know what I mean. And you can see here it is returning an object of type object. So you need to always convert it into a vehicle right here with this casting tool if you want to have everything set up properly. And then I could do something like super truck get wheels. Copy that. And in this situation, I'm going to put super truck 2. And you're going to see that it's going to get the value that I defined here for wheels and not the default. So there's proof that it is a clone, or at least to a certain extent. So let's come in here and do some more interesting things. Let's say, uh, just to prove that Super Truck and Super Truck 2 are indeed completely different objects, how can you do that? Well, I'm going to call hash code on it. I'm going to put Super Truck 2 and then hash code again. And whenever I call it, remember objects have a unique number that defines them. You're going to see that both of these are completely different. And indeed they are. Kind of similar, but completely different. Just understand whenever you clone a, an object, if you like, for example, have an object inside of another object, so you have um, object A, and then inside of object A, you have a sub object B, you are not going to make a copy of sub object B. That's a thing that clone does not do by default. But this is kind of a complicated concept that we're going to get into later. So if you don't get that, don't worry about it because most people don't. But I'll cover it later on whenever it becomes more of an issue. So those are a whole bunch of different built-in methods that come with the object and class class. 
Leave any questions or comments below. Next, we're going to go into threads, and we're going to be getting into more exciting things. Till next time.